Yes. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, it's all mine, right? No. Well, whatever. You can film me. It doesn't matter. I, I don't mind. Keep other people out of the shop. Uh, okay. I, I, so my name is Vlad. I've been involved in media with the movement since the very beginning. Um, I was worked on setting up the Global Revolution live stream channel that was mixing everything and so on. So I spent the last two years actually uh, figuring out how to do this on internationally. We're trying to support various occupations around the world as, as things were going down. And we learned a few things. And Clark asked me to come down and just meet with a bunch of activists just to share some of our techniques we've developed over the last, I don't know, three, four years and so on. So one of the things we found that's useful is when uh, a community has its uh, like a cheap equipment that can be borrowed to film actions and, and stream them and put them on real time. What we're really encouraging people to do is on the local level, set up media team consisting of people who are at, in the actual action groups. Not a professional media team that covers Occupy, but activists inside groups that are organizing actions. Every action group forms a media, media team. Somebody who's gonna manage the blog, someone's gonna manage the whatever, right? And they coordinate among themselves with different groups as long as there's alignment of principles to create, to, because you need mutual aid. You need to help each other to get this up. And th when this happens, you get a lot of unity actually, because the people who are doing communications are all talking to each other. And it's very decentralized, which is also a big problem in our movement that a lot of movement res media resources were monopolized by individuals like all over the place and caused a lot of friction and distraction. So anyway, so, to facilitate that, what we've done is we've been trying to get a hold of, and I think communities should fundraise with themselves, a, a basic media kit to cover actions, for example, that every group can borrow, like when, they, when something happens. So that there's no situation, for example, that there's no live stream, because the quote unquote professional media group, which is not professional and fluid, whatever, doesn't show up. So that means everybody in every action group should learn how to live stream, but it's very easy. You're just installing an app on, your, on the phone, or if you already have a phone, you can do it yourself and just communicating to whoever is going to be doing coordination of all this media that you're live and stuff like that. But then you need to set up people who are doing writing because it's not just about showing something in real time. You have to contextualize it. So if you are, but it, and the, the whole idea is that you start doing this in all the different action groups, you're going, to be, you're going to create a super powerful media thing that can actually tell the message. So that's basically, that's basically the essence of, 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 of this presentation. So in terms of, I'm just going to share with you my experiences in terms of like how it worked and explain a little bit how it worked in, in the past for me. So we went to Turkey, like right when occupation started in Gezi Park uh, this past June. And well, the reason that happened that way is because one of the members of Global Rev, which is international, was Turkish. She was in Istanbul. He was one of the people who started the Gezi media team when they took the park. And we started helping them produce the channel, mix, whatever, get the word out from the very beginning. And then a whole bunch of us started preparing how to like set up Wi-Fi over the camp. So a whole bunch of people went in, set up Wi-Fi, got the signal out because we knew eventually 3G would go down. I mean, that was basically our whole thing. But the way that worked over there was that it was the same exact model that all, the way Gezi occupation worked actually, it was a lot of different parties, but, but not parties in the standard sense of like democratic or public parties here, but it was all these banned parties from the last 100 years for, for anti-government activity. So the, the, the Gezi park itself actually like didn't really have a general assembly because it was impossible. There were 50,000 people in that park. It was, and 50,000 people belonging to a gazillion different affiliations. So it was definitely not this typical like OWS, like no affiliation experience at all. The assembly started after we got kicked out of the park. So the day after we got kicked out of the park, suddenly everyone was in their neighborhoods and there were assemblies in every single neighborhood of Istanbul. It was like, boom. And this is how things are kind of developing over there, just to give an idea. But uh, the, important, most, the most important thing about it is that the media, the way people are doing like live stream and coordination was co collaborative, okay? It's not a culture of a star live streamer or a star reporter making a name for himself doing this stuff. It, that works too to some degree, but that creates problems. Because that's the star culture. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be brilliant individuals, by the way. People should be celebrated for, the, for their genius. But this whole thing where everyone wants to be the star, or you have a, like a set of live streamers who survive based on how much donations receive from their live stream, you're creating a capitalist a competition system around a project whose main purpose is supposed to be the empowerment of the citizens to speak. There's a contradiction there, right? So you think in the community how we get around this problem, right? But one of the easiest ways to do it is to build something that's collaborative. And collaborative is opposed to cooperative, by the way. 
Cooperative means you respect people's autonomy more. I mean, in, in, in this language. Think about that, because a lot of media groups also, a lot of people, they get frustrated that there's consensus, right? You, to speak, that's a problem, right? So create more autonomous things, so it's not, the, there is no consensus. Everyone's free to more or less say what they want, as long as it's in accordance with principles. Then obviously you're still gonna fight over the principles, but it's more constrained, and then people feel more empowered to speak, which is, so, so anyway. Yes? God. Um, God. Are you willing to start a working group on communication, which we so sorely need, and do you have the time? Me? No, I'm a visitor. I am a visitor, but I'm telling you, first, okay, yes or no? It's 90%, 90 no and 10% yes. So I cannot give you the time and start a working group here, because I don't live here. I'm a visitor. I'm a friend. I live in Madrid right now. And I, I, my, I have a wife and daughter there, and I, 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 San Francisco is beautiful, but I can't, I would love to, but I can't because of other life obligations, right? But I can help, and also you have people here who can do it. The thing yeah, is, where? you do, you just have to find them and, and inspire them. You, you're God, right? So do it. <laughs> <laughs> the reality is all of you can all do it. Can, right? you, you can be the media team, it doesn't matter, you, fi you find the people, it's a beauty to speak. And I can explain briefly, and I'm going to explain. We built some tools which allow to get basically community resources. For example, anyone with a cheap laptop now who's doing media, we build these cheap desktops and convert them into these virtual machine things. You can edit video and do media work from the cheapest device because you can just come over remotely and use one of those things, for example. So we're creating media center, stuff like that. And we can teach the community how to build their own here. And you could create something like that for a few hundred bucks with that capability. Can I say something? Yeah. Mona Lisa has something to say and then God again. Um, I, I really like what you're saying, and I just want to point out that, you know, when we talk about technology, um, there's technology like this, this physical hardware, but um, this is social technology and strategy, like that every um, affinity group, every project has to assign someone in the group to be media team, and so those, that's anyone with a cell phone can be media team, and that that's what, um, like we used at Marsh Games Monsanto, and many of our actions, we already employ that. That tactic, and but yes, I really like the idea of collaborating together in a way that's not just Facebook. That's what I said. Where else do are we going to share our, our, our information, our lives? Where is it? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. We have this already. Um, it, well, yeah. Basically, every there's so how many times you see Nancy and a photographer? There's always a photographer. I'm sorry. There's two people. There's a photographer. There's six people. There's two photographers. There's you know, like every 350.org thing is all about the, the visuals. Like, literally 90% of every meeting is about the visuals and where, and where that's going. Yeah, I'm not you, gonna, I was going to say this. If you guys set up a work, announce a workshop on media, invite people to join, right? Media skills, teach them how to use Twitter. Like after today, I'm not going to take much more of your time because there's so many. Take your time, take your time. Uh, no, what I was going to say is that you're gonna I'm going to explain this. Uh, what I can do is, uh, whoever, there's not that many people here. Whoever wants to learn more, but, because I can share like some methods of how we use TweetDeck to create collaborative Twitter groups of different action groups. Because with TweetDeck, you can't steal the password. So you can share the account, access to account, without worrying about someone writing off of the account, which is a, it's still a risk because they can tweet like, you know, something bad from your account, but you can cancel and do that. It's, it's manageable, and it's about creating small affinity groups that work together. Anyway, I can explain that. A whole, I can show the physical tools, but I don't have to subject everyone in this room because people are here to talk about actions and not to learn about technology. I think we want to know about this tool. Whenever you want, it's up to you. I just don't want to take it. So anyway, so yeah, so the, the basic idea, so what I was going to say was that you have the skills in this community, like San, Fran I'm sorry, San Francisco Bay Area is probably one of the most uh, wealthy communities when it comes to people who do media, people who do activism. Like you, have, you, have, you actually have a community, a huge community. That's the reality. In a lot of places in the, in the States, Post occupied, three years post occupied, the community is much weaker. They don't have the, the amount of people who know all this material. So you have those people. Organize workshops. Because in the end, it's about empowering the young people, it's about empowering the 20, 21 year olds with those tools, and then teaching them, okay, this is how you collaborate. And then, like, and build brick by brick. First, Lord, get everybody on Twitter. Then, get, teach people how to consolidate Twitter. So get people how to consolidate live streams. If you set up a working group, how to like, create a, a TV channel properly, but horizontally and everything. We'll explain you how we did it. It's, you, you can copy what we did and improve on it and so on. Um, so one of the kind of like pressing issues that's happening right now in some of the um, Occupy Fronts we've been talking about is 
that YouTube and, and Google and stuff are requiring now that like you're very identified if you post something. So that means if I were to post like the, um, some live stream of like naming the, the badge numbers and police names in, in an action where you know something was happening that that that, that I thought oh for as an activist I should let this police brutality be seen or whatever. So I'm going to post this. There's the, there, there's no longer a way that you can do that anonymously. Oh, wow. So it's like that, that it always gets tracked back to you. So where you know a cutting edge thing that I think that, that really is needed in activism is going to be some sort of, of hub where um, information can get uploaded anonymously, however that may be, like Bitcoin, right? Where we're, that the reason why.